previously on Super Idols RPG. Uh, they want Violence Violet to be the headliner for this gig. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense, of course. So wait, we don't we don't get a group name. We're just support for Vivi, and we are Sagittaria. It might just be fun to you know have a little sparring match, so to speak. Vivi heats up in a in an embarrassed blush, and she says, "Fine," and thrusts both hands up into the air and attempts to just destroy the stage. The all the bees from the Hives that swarming out in a frenzy, and they'll just... I think they might attack the audience. I don't care who I hit, I'm just punching. You uppercut Diana directly in the bottom of the chin. Perhaps it's all over the videos, are all over Twitter. We, that was our first first battle, and we, we essentially wiped ourselves out. If y'all are gonna do this, uh... Nothing's ever gonna go to plan. The only way you're gonna not hurt somebody with your powers is if you learn how to use your powers. And I think the powers angle of it, yeah, it's it's dangerous, but it was always worth it just to see just how much everybody smiled when it was working. I think I get that. This was interesting. I hope to see more of your dancing performances. And, uh, remember, three things. Poise, elegance, perfection. I add another X on the board, erase the lowercase m, and then make it a capital. Rhythmics. Rhythmics. That sounds good. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And a few people do shoot a little bit of cell phone video of you doing that, going like, Oh, that was so cool! Oh, who are you? Jaden's waving, like, hi, I'm Jaden. <laughs> Hi, uh, Bane Raven. Check out our show next Saturday. To the members of Sagittaria, you are cordially invited to attend Fort McNally's Idol Club's inaugural concert to be held this Saturday at the Stormlight. Tickets will be reserved in your name. You're not gonna be the only group on the bill for your time slot now. This is no easy way to say it. It's Sagittaria turning this show into a rematch between the two of you would definitely draw all the people who saw those viral videos to your show. So we're not sharing the stage, we're battling for the stage? Exactly. And she brings up some photos of Sagittaria. Of course, you recognize Diana and Rosette and Ashley, but you see they're also with three other girls, also in these white idol outfits. They are training up three more idols because they want to bring their total to six to give themselves an advantage. Okay, that is good information. Thank you. Yes, well, hopefully we won't need to resort to subterfuge and sabotage to show that we're superior to Diana and her group. So, I guess is the plan just to put on the best damn show you all can? Yeah. Like always. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sounds like a plan I can get behind. And she raises up a light stick in a brilliant shining violet for you all. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I am your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. And Luca. Hello. How is everybody feeling? Nervous. Ooh. Very nervous. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. It's a good type of nervous. This is a big, big thing <laughs> for everybody involved. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm also, like, extremely hyped, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be super freaking cool. Mm-hmm. I'm thrilled. Wait, how long do we have left before the show? Uh, it's eight in the morning, and the show is at six at night, so you have the day left to prepare and psych yourselves up. Okay, we've got a while, okay. 
Oh my god, that's way too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you all doing in the, like, time beforehand? <laughs> like, you'll probably want to arrive a couple hours before the show to, like, get set up in your dressing rooms and prepare and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you still have, like, time before that, even. So I feel like Angie's in, like, performer mode. So she's like, here's all of your meal plans for the day so you're not eating anything <laughs> too heavy, that you're not having any milk products to save your voice and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, like, so. she just, like, hands everybody an apple. <laughs> just, yeah. Because <laughs> those are the best things for your voice. Yeah, and, like, making sure that they all know to drink lots of water today because it's going to be a lot on their bodies later on and water always helps and yeah just stuff like that <laughs> she's got a list on her clipboard awesome I think um is that really telling um, Jaden this just as he's about to pull out his like lunchbox of incredibly unhealthy foods like, <laughs> just, they're just all just junk food and sugary snacks and he's about to just take a bite then you probably like just before he's about to bite into it, you like literally put the like clipboard in between the snack and his mouth and say, no, no. <laughs> you can have that after the show. Oh, okay, okay. Trust me on this one. All right, so I think you all finish up here. I don't want to drag it on too much longer. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you all do whatever prep that you need before the show, psych yourselves up, eat the right things, um, drink all your water. Do all your stretches. Queen Bee, <laughs> make sure you eat something other than honey. Just probably just gonna <laughs> quietly vibrate on the spot until it's time to get there. <laughs> Alright, so in that case, I think we can we can probably just cut to later that evening mm -hmm. at the Stormlight. Uh, Y'all uh, show up at the venue, and mm -hmm. Petra, of course, is there to welcome you and usher you around the, the back entrance so that you don't have to worry about any, like, crowds out front. And she sort of ushers you into the, the back area. And she looks very excited for all of you. Uh, I gotta tell you, I, I'm a little nervous for all of you. We don't normally do these kinds of, like, impromptu versus shows, but I can tell you they do always get the crowds going, so I'm, I'm, I think you're gonna have really good energy to work off of, at least. All right, good. Cool, good. yeah, cool. That's, uh, that's so great. Yes. Um, before we continue, can I just... I drank a lot of water because I was really nervous and now I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> can I just run into that quickly? Oh, sure, sure. Come back quick. I have something to show y'all. That was out of character. T actually needs to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, it works in character as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe we'll that keep it in. <laughs> While Angie is going to the bathroom, I lean towards uh, Vivi and say, Vivi, before we go on stage, I, I need to tell you something. Uh, all right? Not right now, nothing from the Jaden. Okay. That, that definitely gets a confused and suspicious glance. I think Jaden's probably just, like, vibrating in a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit of nerves just vibrating, like... As soon as I'm sure they're not, nobody's seen, I take... Uh, a small, like, an Altoid tin out of my jacket pocket mm -hmm. and open it. Inside there are three very plump, very large bees. Okay. <laughs> These are Veronica, Heather, and JD. Oh. I'm not playing... Uh, they are a last resort. But and w if you tell me to use them, I will. Okay. I... Hopefully we won't need them, but that's good to know. Thank you. It's using our powers. It's not exactly stabbing mm -hmm. them in the back, but it's iffy, and I don't. I'm not sure the others would understand, but I think you do. No, I I agree. It's. I, I mean, I think it's it's completely within the terms of the battle. That's that's your power. So yeah, they they won't be expecting the swarm because <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. bring the swarm in here, you know. But it's very it's very clever. It's good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm back. Oh, perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. So the group gets back together after their bathroom break. Um, and Petra looks very excited and she's got her phone out and she says, uh, so I have a, I have a message from someone for you all. And she shows you her phone and 
sure enough, on the video is uh, Twiddle and the rest of the extensions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was not expecting that one, okay. <laughs> uh, and this is clearly a pre-recorded message, and Twiddle smiles at the phone camera and says, Hey, what's up, kids? We're just calling to say good luck on the big show. I know you all are going to bring down the house tonight. I heard you find some other idols. I just want to say they ain't shit, y'all. I mean, nothing. I checked them out. Not as good as you. Not even in comparison. Also, if you got to don't be afraid to fight a little dirty. Just remember, crime is awesome. Especially if the people you're doing crime against suck like they do. Hope you like the instruments I gave you, and I can't wait to say, oh, sh- oh shit, oh shit, they're here. Okay, you know what, we gotta go, y'all. Listen, we'll be rooting for y'all, but I gotta get out of here. Twiddle out! And you can see, you can hear the faint noise of gunshots in the background behind them <laughs> as, they, as they, the rest of the extensions wave and say hi and good luck to you all. Um, and a tuft of hair comes towards the phone and presses the off button. <laughs> uh, Vivi turns to Queen Wee and, and Andrea and says, oh, they gave us instruments, but the instruments were stolen, so we had to give them back. Yeah, I thought we felt bad. Oh. But that was very right. sweet, though. A nice gesture. Thought it counts. They, they seem nice. Thank, thank you, Petra. Yeah, no worries. I, I, I figured you'd probably want to see that to hype you up. Like, I, I don't know about you, but hearing, hearing a, a good luck message from Twiddle always gets me excited to do things. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I agree with the crime is cool part, but I mean, I appreciate everything else. Uh, I think at that, Vivi glances at Queen Bee sideways. (laughs) I have no idea what you're talking about, you might allude to. (laughs) Poker face. So so Petra kind of leaves you at that and gets you set up with your dressing room. There's kind of limited space backstage, so... Uh, just for convenience sake, you're all sharing one big dressing room, green room, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And as you're getting ready in there, you all hear a knock at the door. And this time it's Grace. Oh, hi. I guess I haven't given a description of them before because they this is the first time they're appearing visually on the show. Um, but they are wearing like kind of a standard secretary type outfit. So like a nice blouse and a little and a little tie um, and a pencil skirt. And they have their their hair is kind of like a white blonde. It's done up in a bun. And they're wearing glasses. And they come to say hi. And they say, hey, how's how's everyone going? How's how's everyone feeling, I guess? A little nervous. Um, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom again. And then Angie runs away. <laughs> oh, no. Does, does T have to go to the bathroom again? No, no. Okay. <laughs> uh. okay. Uh, what is Angie doing at the bathroom, by the way? Is she actually going to the bathroom, or is there something else up? The first time, yeah, she would have gone to the bathroom. The second time, she's probably feeling a little more nervous. Aww. Hmm. Yeah, we're, I mean, n- nervous, of course, but we've been we've been practicing this. We're, I think we're good. I, I hope so. I know I, I, I trust the training that y'all have been doing. Um, I, I think you're, you're going to do great. And also, I came to give you some, some, I guess maybe some potentially distressing news, but also good news. Um, not the kind that I gave you the other day. This is more actual good news. Um, so I checked into what you asked about re- regarding outside tech. And when I asked the venue about it, they did say that Sagittaria had tried requesting to have a special disco ball installed over the stage. Uh, but I, when I heard about that, I sent them a counter request from Rain Shadow, refusing to let them have it. So oh, that's good. They were trying to bring something in, but it sounds like um, it won't. It won't be there. Good. So just letting you know, they they tried. Thank you. Yeah, no, hmm. no problem. I hope that whatever they were going to try isn't something like they have a backup plan for. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, as as far as we know, they're. Maybe issues with Crimson Signal technology, so hopefully, whatever they're trying to do, it they they can't just sneak it in. It has to, it's big mm. enough that it has to be installed. Interesting. Yeah, we just don't feel like it's being properly vetted. You know, I'll have to pass that on to Mary and let her know that uh, Rain Shadow probably should be wary about using any of their tech. Yeah, I um, 
I s the last time I saw the tech being used, I kind of sensed something, and it, then it disappeared. And then, um, and then everyone else on stage kind of felt awkward, like unusually tired. Mm. So I, I think it had to do with the tech. Really, that is worrying. I I haven't heard of tech having that kind of properties before. This, that's definitely news to me. Mm. Okay, I'm back. Oh, uh, hi. We're we're just talking about um magical energy stealing technology. D is this? Do you know about this too, Angie? I cut Jaden a look. <laughs> 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 In case, it, like, because Angie doesn't feel like we should be talking to any adults about that. We had this conversation about trusting adults, but <laughs> 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 yeah. that lesson just left his head the the next day. <laughs> uh, so we went to see a show. And uh, I ended up dancing on stage, and I was exhausted after. And, like, I, I dance a lot. I've performed a lot on stage, and I've never been that kind of tired. And mm. the artists we collaborated with that day made the same observation. And I asked mm. if um, they had some technology from Crimson Signal before that, and they had some new stage technology that they were using. So we believe that there's some stuff going on and we don't trust it right now. And we could just be paranoid. But I don't know. I watch like I watch a lot of cartoons and maybe they're based on something real. Mm. Yeah, we're, we're not saying it's malicious. It's just, you know, the technology is new. There's hard light and uh, sonics. It could interfere with it, it you know. I, I suppose if if what you're saying is true and there there is something intentional going on that's really worrying and I yeah, well, we're I not think, saying that I think we should have like rain shadows investigations department look into it if that's the case I don't think it's that I think it's just they're a new company but uh, if you feel like something malicious might be going on I guess you can check it I, out I guess I guess you're right it could just be like the super idle tech equivalent of Soylent or something like that. Yeah. Cutting you know, corners. We're, we're trying to get more information on this, so if you could just not tell all of the details to Mary or anyone else, that would be really helpful while we, we just figure out what we think is going on. And they raise an eyebrow at that, and they're not sure what to make of it, but they, they nod and agree, like, okay, uh, yeah, for now I won't say anything, but definitely keep me updated on all this. It does sound concerning, regardless. Okay, thank you, Grace. Yeah, no problem. I guess, uh, now that you're all back, I do want to explain a little bit more about how the show is going to work. So, the first number of the show, you're probably not going to be happy about this, the first number is going to be Downpour since both groups know it, and they're already experienced with creating improvised choreography with it. <sighs> Plus, it's the song from the video, and that mm -hmm. will hype up the audience. I knew it. Yeah, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news again, but... Don't no, worry, I've been practicing with it. I, based on how the show's been promoted, I, I expected that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good, then. So, and again, you'll both be, you'll be on the same stage, you'll start on opposite sides of the stage, but you're definitely allowed to cross over to the other team's side. So both of you will be able to act at the same time. There's no turn taking like there was in the one that you already did. And they turn to Jaden at that point and they say that, Jaden, I know that you're the only one who has an instrument on stage, so you're a bit of a special case. Um, what the venue has decided to do um, is their stage has the ability to do like a raised platform kind of thing. So your drum set can be on this raised platform. So you aren't as much at a disadvantage for being like more tied down to your instrument. The The dancers might still try to get up to you, but it will give you a bit of a high ground advantage since you're otherwise kind of tied to one spot on the stage. Oh, th thank you. Um, I actually didn't think about that. Yeah, no worries. Plus it'll look uh, they, they give a little chuckle, plus it, it looks cool as shit. It, it really does look cool. Yeah, so you're gonna be, again, kind of more off to the your one side of the, the stage, but kind of like also sort of center-ish stage as well. Yeah. 
so that you uh, the audience will get a nice nice view of where you are. Okay, um, I think that's about it. You you know the rest. You know what your set is going to be uh, if you win, and I hope you do win. So, good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank they you. give you a, a wave as they leave. Thank you, Grace. All right, so now you are all just alone in this dressing room, and time is ticking down closer and closer to the beginning of the show. Jaden's going to run over to um, Petra, if he can find her. Petra's still stationed kind of near the dressing rooms. Uh, she asked to be on duty, like, watching the, the two groups preparing, because she wants to make sure that everything is fair between the both of you. No chicanery is going on. Yeah. And, yeah, it's Um... Petra, could, could, could I ask you to do me a huge favor? Oh, sure. What what can I do for you? Um, well, my parents and my little sister are back in the UK, but I really want them to be able to watch. So could you hold this? And I just, like, pull up my phone and, like, it's basically, I guess it's Skype. It's still Skype, right? <laughs> so it kind of, like, shows the, <laughs> right, like, the contact this is a, foot to call this. a non-pandemic world where Zoom hasn't taken off. <laughs> yes. So um he kind of shows that um his his mum's contact and just says, When the show starts, can you like call him I really texted her so she knows, but can you call my mum and l- like hold the phone up so she can watch the performance? My mum, dad and little sister kinda of wanna watch the first show I'm in. Uh and she grins ear to ear. I can absolutely do that for you. It would be my honor. They'll get the best seats in the house. I'll I'll be right near the stage. Thank you. And like Jaden's just grinning from ear to ear. I hope they don't mind. It's a little off center because I have to be kind of off to the side, but still. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. And she gives you a big thumbs up. And he's just grinning. He's he's very excited now. And he rushes back <laughs> to the rest of the group. Okay. So last bit of business before we move on. We need to get the last couple members of the group transformed. Um, and as Dana suggested before session, we are going to do that as part of the group transformation move still. Uh, since we'll say you're transforming into a group. So, Angie, which labels would you like to shift? I'm going to shift mundane down another one to All minus right. two. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to put danger up to plus two. Sure. When I transform, I'm going to shift my freak up and my mundane down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nobody wants to be normal for this performance. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's very fair. So you are all doing the group transformation move, where multiple idols transform as a team to take on a major foe. So you all collectively decide which idol has the greatest personal stake in the conflict. Uh, In this case, it's not necessarily the greatest personal stake, but just who's leading the conflict. I think it's Valerie. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Vivi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, um, so Vivi again has the spotlight for this group transformation. So Vivi gets to choose a bonus from the transformation surge list. What would you like to take from that? Yeah, this time I'm going to take uh, you inspire hope with a few words of sincerity, clear a condition for a teammate. Nice. I think I'd like to do that and also, since this is going to be more more than a few words, uh, maybe do that and also roll an actual comfort or support. I have a quick question. If I rolled for to hold burn, would it hold until the start of the show? Oh, sure. Yeah, this is... Yeah. Roll, can I roll burn before I get <laughs> comforted and supported? Because my burn <laughs> relies on conditions I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's hope I don't fail this. Okay. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. All right. So you got an eight on that. So you get to mark a condition and take your burn. And I'll pick afraid because that kind of makes sense. Yep. (laughs) Very much so. Okay. Uh, Just before before we go on stage, everyone, I just wanted to say that um, I know that This group has gotten off to kind of a rocky start, and we didn't really know each other going in, and I will admit that I really wanted to establish myself as the top idol in this group, and was just looking to use this 
whole club to propel myself to achieve my dreams, and I realized that having my own record label sponsor the gig and, and put me in the front as a condition of that gig goes right along with that, but I think I've, I've realized in the last couple of weeks that we, we actually do work really well together as a team, and I... In the last battle, I, I tried to just act like the star and do everything on my own, and I think that was probably why I lost control and and tried to overextend myself, but I didn't apologize for that before, so I wanted to say that I'm sorry that I, I lost control, and I know everyone kind of fell apart after that point, but I I just left without trying to help or apologizing and but as far as I'm concerned, this isn't this isn't a violence violet show. This is this is a group show. This this is a rhythmics show. And I just I, I feel like we're gonna do so much better than we did before because we've been practicing together, we've been we've been working together and I'm really proud to be part of this group. I wait for a moment, but then I just... I put a hand on Valerie's shoulder. You know, I didn't think you had it in you to apologize. I'm glad I was wrong. Let's destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> Jada will just go up to um, Valerie and just say, Can I hug you? Okay. And Jaden just give the most big, big old hug. Aww. Valerie just accepts the hug with her arms at her side. <laughs> <laughs> I love this visual too because Jaden is so much taller than Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And how does Angie take this? Um. Thank you. And that's it. Ooh. <laughs> Okay. It's more... I don't want it to s sound cold. It's more like she doesn't really know what to say in the moment. And there's a lot... It's fair. I mean, Valerie She's, is that's... still your rival. Yeah. Yeah, it's very fair. Yeah, and it was a pretty cool speech. So... But right now I feel like um, Angie's a little more nerves and stuff. So there's a little bit of that going on, I think. But... Uh, yeah, she's like, thank you. And then when Jaden's hugging her, she kind of like does that awkward pat on her back kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I guess we're not, we're not in a place yet for a, for a group hug, but we will be eventually in this campaign. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden will make it happen. That is Jaden's goal. <laughs> it's only arc one. There's plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. All right. And with those words of literal comfort and support and the determination to do a good show, Petra comes to fetch you all eventually to take you to the stage. Oh, you know what we should do first is enter battle against a dangerous foe as a Oh, team. that's right! Oh, oh yeah. god, thank you for remembering! Oh my god! <laughs> I always remember our... our I remember that we have the, the custom group transformation move but i forget the actual masks move that is appropriate mm -hmm. for the situation we don't we don't <laughs> enter many battles as a team yes the thing that is very fair yeah yeah like we'll, we'll say you didn't do it last time because you were ill prepared but this time you're plenty prepared so I, I, you definitely should um use the enter battle against a dangerous foe move so people who haven't heard this on the podcast before when you enter battle against a dangerous foe as a team Add two team to the team pool. So you had three before, so now you're going to have five. And you get more or less depending on your answers to the following questions. If the leader has influence over every teammate, add another team. Does anybody not have Valerie having influence over them? Hmm. I think I only have influence over Jaden and Queen Bee, but not Angie, because that was oh, taken away right. That's a few true. sessions ago. That's true. So you don't get that team, unfortunately. And also that makes sense for the situation given how Angie is trying to be like very like professional about this right now. It's true. Focused on my nemesis. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so 
opposite. If everyone has the same purpose in the fight at another team, I would say you easily have that. Yeah, I think we have the same. Yes. Yeah. If any team member mistrusts the leader of the team, remove a team point. Does anybody mistrust Valerie? No, right now. No, Jaden definitely doesn't. No, no. All right. So keep that. And if your team is ill-prepared or off-balance, remove a team. I think we can pretty easily say that doesn't apply. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So you now have a total of six team. Um, And I guess I'm not sure if we mentioned this on mic earlier, but you effectively have a couple of more team because Angie actually has a few hold left over from when she shared a vulnerability or weakness. So you have a couple of extra effective team points that you could use as well. It's going to be good. You are all off waiting, kind of off stage, stage right behind the curtains. Uh, You can see in the the shadows across the stage in stage left, you can see a group of people in white outfits. You can't see them very well because of the shadows, but you can tell exactly as Tyra said, it looks like there's a group of six people back there. And as the lights start to come down in the house and the colored lights start to come up on the stage, you hear an announcer start to speak. Honored guests of the Stormlight, please put your hands together for a very exciting event. You've seen them clash in viral videos. You've seen them strutting their stuff on Idlegram with the likes of Papaya and Vapor Wave. And now they're here to prove that they have what it takes to get big in cadence. Give a big hand for Rednex! First, we have drummer and master of earth, wind, fire, and water. Give it up for Elementum! Elementum just walked onto stage. He still seems very sheepish and just kind of like waves at the crowd, everyone. And um, probably that gets ready. You can hear Aunt Jen cheering in the audience. You can see Petra has your phone up and is uh, and has got it pointed at you so you know your, your parents and Alicia are watching. Okay, that makes him feel a bit more confident. So, he, like, he stands up a little straighter, and a massive grin across his face, and he waves, and he gets, like, I guess, stands in the spot where he's gonna summon his drums. Yeah, you, you've got like a little bit of stairway ladder, or something at the back of the platform that will take you up there, and where you can manifest your drums when you're ready. Next, the girl who's got the whole town buzzing about her flashy style. Let's hear it for Queen Bee. I leap on the stage and pirouette with one leg up. The crowd goes wild, especially your mom. She's not like super close to the front, but you can definitely still see her out in the crowd cheering hard for you. Oh my god. You also happen to catch a snatch of papaya in the crowd a little further back, um, and she's very politely clapping. All right, all right, you know she packs a punch, and I'm sure her opponents do too. Welcome to the stage, Bane Raven! So, basically she was really nervous up until this point, but then her face kind of relaxes and she looks at Vivi and she nods professionally. Mm -hmm. Vivi nods back. And uh, she rolls her shoulder back and she... It's kind of like the dancers glide on stage. She just walks and she does a whole ballet bow, essentially, and goes to stand in her place. Uh, You can see your parents kind of midway through the audience. They're clapping, but they look very awkward because they don't come to these sorts of venues very often. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Freddy, unfortunately, is not here. He's far too young to come to these sorts of things. Um, I forgot to mention this before, but I assume Kyle's there in the audience. Oh yeah, of course Kyle's there. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle is cheering like the loudest, uh, and he like you can see him like jump like super high up in the air and like give a big woo. And last but certainly not least, the center of rhythmics leading the charge with sword in hand and the power to literally decimate her opponents. It's the newest rising star from Rain Shadow Records. The one, the only, Violence Violet! And the crowd absolutely goes wild um, as you come onto the stage, Vivi. Yeah, and I think Vivi walks on the stage without her sword and dramatically walks onto the stage, then holds up an arm and creates the sword and, like, spins it in the air and brings it down onto the stage in front of her. That definitely gets a reaction. You've got people whooping and cheering and clapping. Hardest, of course, would be Alice, who is 
made sure to get near the front row. She came super early to make sure she got a good uh, spot. Um, she's actually right next to Karen, who is raising, like, six light sticks in each hand in rainbow <laughs> colors and uh, and waving them as hard as a, a Karen can, which is not as much as a, a normal person would, but you know it's a lot for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vivi is... It's comforting to see the folks there, but she's also just, like, totally focused straight ahead and not nodding or, or smiling at them. She's just focused on what she's doing. Okay, so you all get in your position on your side of the stage, Elementum up on the platform, the three of you kind of fanned out around it with Vivi at the front, and the announcer says... And facing off against them today are a group of idols who are nothing to sniff at. The idols of Fort MacArthur are always forces to be reckoned with, and this year's batch looks to be no exception. They're eager to prove that they've got what it takes to top all comers. Please give a big hand for Sagittaria! And, of course, the, the first to come out on stage is uh, Ashley, who has the light and fluffy white blouse skirt and the pink Rita Hayworth hair and her announcement is and they've got a big crew with a killer ensemble look going this year starting with the adorable Flora Fantastic and you're actually all going to learn all their idol names today that I've never actually said on mic ooh yay <laughs> yes <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm sorry I never remember to say idol names this is the perfect time <laughs> yes and after uh, Ashley slash Flora does her little twirl in her skirt, next comes the goddess-like Dame Divine, who is uh, Rosette, who comes out with the super long, thick black hair and her Roman goddess-type outfit. And next comes the first of the new idols. You have the spunky Maid Marvelous. And this is the one who has the red princess hair, and she's got a sleeveless white dress shirt and shorts. She also has these knee-high white socks. Um, she has, a again, a silver and gold belt and silver and gold sneakers. She looks kind of almost like a tennis player, almost. Um, and she gives a very cute little look and a peace sign as she comes out on stage. The refined Empath Esquire! And this is the one who has the sort of revolutionary girl Utena Rose of Versailles type white uniform. Again, has a lot of gold and silver accents on it. She also has lo what looks like a sword sheathed at her side. And she has a monocle, <laughs> like a gold monocle. <laughs> because of course she does. <laughs> then we have the show-stopping Sister Spectacular. And she is the one with the white gymnastics leotard. She does like a full like backflip out on stage. She's definitely some kind of gymnast. Her her long brown hair like flips impressively behind her as she lands and does like a, a cool like gymnast landing. And of course, the leader of Sagittaria, the archer who always aims true, Lady Luminous. And I think Diana needs no introduction at this point. <laughs> She comes yes. out with her big flowy cape uh, and gives a winning smile to the crowd and she pulls out her energy bow straight away and shoots like an arrow that bursts into almost like a fireworks type display of white energy that is certainly meant to be some kind of jab at Angie. <laughs> Not like at Angie, but like just look, I can do fireworks too. Now we have both idol groups on stage and ready to face off against each other for the rematch of this month. Hit it, everybody! And the first notes of Downpour start off. I think Valerie is going to start off, just kind of go head-to-head -head singing against Diana. Yeah, I think Diana definitely uh, takes up the initiative as well. She she doesn't want to be outsped to the first verse of the song. So you both start out singing the first lines of the song very strong, both coming up towards center stage. Um, are you facing towards her or facing more towards the audience as you sing? If I recall correctly, when during the downpour episode, I said that like the first, the sort of theme of the song, and, and especially the first verse, was like the world being terrible 
and mean, and so while singing this, Valerie is looking directly at Diana. Oh, very good. So you're both kind of like stalking across the stage towards each other, singing at each other. I love this visual. Yes. Uh, I figured that could be either directly engage, or it could be... It Maybe it, it, it's time for my solo would probably be later if we... Yeah, if we I, was, I was thinking you'd say it's time for my right? solo for like the show-stopping thing that you're going to okay. do. Could also be a provoke, maybe. Or you provoke. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, also, that's also an option. Because you are using your words. Yeah, the way I'm doing this might actually be trying to provoke her into making a mistake. I think what I'm going to specifically try to provoke her to do is to focus only on me because when we fought them before they did like big team attacks that fired at the whole group so I'm gonna try to provoke her to only paying attention to me and not to her teammates or to my teammates. That sounds like a good idea. That is a nine. And Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that probably fits with they air and you gain a critical opportunity and the critical opportunity is that Diana is completely focused on you and singing directly at you and trying to prove that she's like a better singer or has better stage presence. And she's not as much focused on the rest of the team right now. All right. So you're you're both basically, you're almost kind of mirroring each other at the moment as you, you mm-hmm. sing the same words and you, fo- you face each other off um, and you stalk kind of toward each other. Maybe you're even circling each other a bit. And the audience is here for it. They, they can feel the like electric energy between the two of you. So I think I'm gonna from right from the get go, um, Dana sits down and starts um, playing just like a really basic um, beat on the drum set. Each hit of the drum kind of reverberates a bit, not louder, but it's kind of like a bass. So it's not loud, but you feel it. Mm-hmm. And and um, with each beat of the drum, I wanna use boost my one of my flares and give a plus one bonus to the next person's roll. Ooh, fancy. As my drum beats essentially support um, either... If, I'll give it to... Bart I'll move. give it to... Pardon? Uh, it's a bard move. Yeah, yeah, it is. A bar, it yeah. is a bard move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's bardic inspiration. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll give it to... Uh, I'll give it to Angie. Yeah, I think my, the beat of my drum will probably like give her uh, very clear rhythm to dance to and that's going to manifest in a plus one to their role as if they use a team from the pool. Thank you. Cool. And I think that just happens. All right. So I think nobody's going to directly come at you just yet. I think the the dancers on Sagittarius side are going to be more focused on uh, showing off their moves to start with uh, just to give the audience kind of a sense of what they can do. So they're fanning out behind Diana and backing her up. There's sort of uh, a couple of them are doing kind of like moves that amplify Diana's movements like doing like kind of reactive fallbacks when like Diana makes like a sudden move or something like that just to seem like there's kind of like almost like a human shockwave coming out from her every like twist of a hand or flip of a, a cloth. But no power is flying just yet. So I'm going to... Hmm. She's not going to assess too much, and she's probably just going to go in and go for the gymnastics dancer first without fully seeing what she can do so that I can take my punch and everyone move. So you are going for uh, Sister Spectacular is the gymnast. Yes. Yeah. I'm saving Ashley for last. Hmm. That makes sense. <laughs> Plus, you 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 know dancers and gymnasts. You you feel pretty comfortable like sizing one up. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And she did the flip stuff, and uh, Angie's uh, not loving that showing off at the beginning <laughs> of the thing. So. Oh yeah, she's definitely been doing like more like cartwheels and flips and showing off like uh, yeah. exactly how like flexible she is. She's loving all this attention. Yeah, so um, that's about enough of that for Angie. So this shifts her <laughs> danger up, and or Ooh. so I can shift her danger up in exchange to shift another label down, and it's going right. to be superior in this case. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so that's her Less ability to assess the situation. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's all I can do. I can just do one move, right? Yeah, I think that's that makes sense, and I think... 
what you're doing to like do this is probably like you're doing your own bit of showing off in her general vicinity like oh yeah you think you're hot stuff look at me just watch out and that's the danger going up <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah, like what kind of moves do you think you're you're doing to be very impressive? Um, some cool hip hop stuff that Kyle taught me. Nice, nice, nice. Cause uh, she's trained in ballet, but she's into hip hop these days. So she's yeah, just doing some cool hip hop freestyle. Yeah, and I think um, Sister Spectacular is is seeing what you're you're doing, uh, and she's. Uh, she's kind of getting in the the vibe of it like she almost doesn't even seem that confrontational of you because she she recognizes another like dancer when she sees one um and she she recognizes an opportunity to create like kind of a cool like thing on stage so like say when you like do like some kind of like break dancing move like with swinging your legs out maybe uh or like kicking out uh, she makes sure to play into that and do like an impressive kind of like leap or like vaulting herself over where your legs are going um so it's almost like a, a mid-air version of like <laughs> playing the the knife game with your hands <laughs> just but, but but with human bodies yeah sounds good to her and i feel like uh and you wouldn't be perturbed for this because she's been in enough dance battles to know what this kind of stuff looks like now so mm-hmm. all that's coming to a head and she just reacts accordingly and does a backflip or something, something, but it looks nice. really cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sh- and uh, spectacular uh, catches your motion doing this, and she responds in kind, and you you end up doing an a, a s- almost simultaneous backflip away from each other. All right, <laughs> I think this is going well so far. Um, Queen Bee, what you up to? I'm going after Rosette. All right. <laughs> So Rosette isn't like doing as many like crazy dance moves, um, but she like she does have a sort of like flowy kind of dance style of her own. Um, it's a lot of like arm movements and sort of practiced uh, like kind of almost ballet like leg movements. Um, and she is starting to summon her powers right now. She is summer- summoning a sort of a barrage of feathers around her that is sort of like just swirling around her. Not like a tornado, more like like a more gentle version of that. Like just a bunch of feathers kind of highlighting her movements. Okay. So I'm gonna go dance towards her in kind of like uh, uh, Jets versus Sharks kind of thing. Oh! Like with the snapping and uh, <laughs> going, being low, trying to intimidate and push her back. Okay. Uh, so that would be, would that be, I guess it's not a, a words thing, but it is very provoking. <laughs> uh, would you like that to be a directly engage or a provoke someone? Hmm. I think it's more of a provoke, because I, I want her, I just uh, want to push her back and uh, like break her concentration. Okay, so you get to roll superior on that. Rolling? You're, you're not using your literal words, but you're using the language of dance. Yes. Hell oh, yeah! Yes. <laughs> That is a 10 on that one. <laughs> what do you want her to do? Describe this. I'm going to dance towards her as menacingly as I can, and then I'm gonna just drop down and sweep the leg. And I'm not trying I'm not trying to actually trip her. I want to scare her. I want to make her fall back and possibly uh, interfere with the others. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so definitely she'll she'll do that. Um, she does, like she sees your leg coming out towards you. Like she saw you coming towards her, so she's like, the she had more feathers sort of coming up as almost like a barrier. But she didn't have like them very low, and she spots like your leg coming towards her low in her vision, and she she's startled and takes a step back, and she stumbles in her movements a bit, which I don't think she was expecting. <laughs> So the feathers also kind of like, they flutter in the air in a kind of like, not very elegant kind of way, because they're following her and she made a not very elegant move. So you can hear some some scattered laughter in the audience and she definitely looks steamed at that. What's the matter? Chicken? Ooh, that gets her. (laughs) She's always the one who's trying to like, tell Diana not to get angry, but that doesn't mean she'll never get angry. (laughs) <laughs> um, so she is definitely gonna respond to that. 
Yeah, I think what she's going to do is she is going to create basically just like an even bigger wave of feathers towards you, almost like a carpet. And she's going to try and like get that under your feet so that she can like pull it out from under you and like make you either fall or like even just have the carpet like pull you closer to the edge of the stage. Uh, so how do you respond to this? Hmm. And I will say, you're, you're, you can get a plus one on responding to this because she's off balance and not really thinking straight. I mean, I can walk on anything. I could try and walk on the feathers. Yeah. I would say that's probably a directly engage in that case. Okay. I know this isn't really a taking turns thing, but I, I felt like it wouldn't make sense to wait for the next turn to have her respond. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna roll. Okay. Yes. All right, so on a seven to nine, you pick one from the following list. Resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Hmm. I think this is probably a case of resist their blows. I think that's so she's that trying too. to push me back, but I just uh, tip tap on the, on the feathers and get closer. <laughs> All right. All right, so I think you do that. You do that very impressively. The audience is like definitely impressed by you as well. Um, and she's getting more visibly frustrated with you too. So you're gonna have this little back and forth going on towards the, <laughs> the back of the stage. And we can take someone else's turn before we come back to this, I think. Yeah, so I think after this has gone on for a little while, especially since Valerie or since Vivi and Lady Luminous, Diana, have been sort of mirroring each other's movements and moving closer to each other. Once they get, like, very close to each other at the center of the stage, Valerie is going to start attacking with her sword, because at that point I figure that, you know, I have a sword and she has a bow and arrow, so I should, <laughs> after sort of drawing each other tor toward each other, I should I should take advantage of the, the fact that we're, you know, standing right in front of each other now and... Yeah. She doesn't have room to use her bow. Right, that makes sense. So that sounds like a directly engaged threat to me. Uh, 100%. That's just going to be rolling with danger. Ah, for a full hit. All right, ten. what's up, danger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that got you a 10. So you get to pick two from the directly engaged threat list. Yeah, I'm going to resist or avoid their blows and impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. I think it's it's your choice whether they are impressed, surprised, or frightened. So tell me what you're you're doing first in that case. So you're 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 coming at her with a sword. Any particular like motion or attack or anything like that? Both of them are are holding their weapons at at their sides while they're you know sort of pacing back and forth on the stage and getting getting closer. And then uh, there's a pause while probably at, at the end of the first verse. There's a a, a Pause while Valerie holds her her sword back in a ready position. Diana realizes what's about to happen and like jumps back, and Valerie jumps forward and and closes the distance and you know, just starts uh, sort of swinging back and forth at her, swinging away. Right, and Diana can definitely tell that she's not in a great place to like repel this since you are at close range. Uh, she knew this was a risk at getting close to you, but it looked hacking cool and it felt like mm -hmm. the, the thing to do in the moment and she's not the greatest at deciding what to do in the moment so yeah i think i think that was probably the the critical opportunity from the provoke earlier yeah definitely <laughs> uh so yeah you you managed to like uh i think you managed to uh i don't think she's frightened yet um but she's definitely uh impressed by your footwork and the 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 attack that you've just made uh and the fact that she can't really respond in kind so she's forced to like back up further, which is not something she wanted to do. Um, but she does she does try to to remain standing strong and uh, gives you kind of like a <laughs> she gives you like a golf clap as she like gets further away from your range. As she moves on with the next bit of the verse, um, she tries to move on to someone else. Actually, she's going to since she's further away from you and further away from other people now like she's I, I imagine her kind of more towards the edge of stage left now um, she's gonna take advantage of who actually is in her archery range um, and she's gonna pull her bow out 
Um, and she's aiming an energy arrow at Jaden. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I do? Okay, I have an idea already. Sure. But I just don't. I didn't, wasn't sure if I wanted to use it now, but I will. Um, so, I think Jaden at this point he's um, closed his eyes. He's like really got into uh, like the feel of the music, the beat of the drums, and um, almost subconsciously. Um, as he's playing the drums, um, with every kick of the, every time you hit the kick, kick drum, I think it's called a kick drum, there's like a rumbling sound from the sky, uh, well not the sky but up above, and then mm-hmm. um, first I think, I'll just say like, um, Queen Bee probably feels it first, this is like a drop of rain, and then another drop, and then it keeps pouring down, and um, it starts to like circle our part of the stage and excluding the others and um, ends up being a barrier of just rain and I'm going to use um, moat which is spend one burn to create a barrier to that will hold back threats for as long as you keep attention on it. The GM may call for you to spend another burn if the barrier is threatened by a particularly powerful enemy. Ooh, so I'm definitely. going to protect us with rain as we play downpour. All right. <laughs> And I think you definitely even, like, call it down during, like, a particularly, like, you save it for a good line about, like, the the rain pouring down on your, someone's soul or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, like, Edgelord lyrics Mary Rain wrote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I need to roll for that either. Let me check. Yeah, you don't um, need to roll for that. You can just spend one yeah, burn no. to create the barrier. I will call for you, actually, to spend another burn to block Diana's arrow. If, if you want to block yeah. her arrow, you will have to spend another burn to do that. Yeah, I'll do that. So, like, when she shoots the arrow, it just, it it kind of wobbles as it gets hit by the rain, and then when it hits, like, the hard stop of the rain, it just stops as if it hit a brick wall. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and it, like, bursts nice. into, like, a really cool, like, sparkly, like, light effect in the rain, so it also creates, like, just a really cool visual that you can impress the audience yeah, and with and you hear ooh, ah, in the crowd. And the whole time, like, Jaden's eyes are still closed, but he kind of smiles when that happens, and it just keeps going. <laughs> uh, you can see through the, the wall of water, you can't see very well, uh, because it's quite thick, I think, um, but you can definitely see enough to see that, like, Diana's kind of like, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Why does this always happen? <laughs> uh, so you've successfully defended. Good job. <laughs> All right. And how are uh, Queen Bee and uh, and Dame Divine slash Rosette doing? <laughs> I'm literally toying with her. <laughs> just fainting and trying to push her back and trying to just keep her off balance. <laughs> I could actually hit her at any time, but I'm not going to. All right. Uh, for right now, she's still trying to like get you off balance, and it's not really working. Um, and sh- when she realizes that's not working, the the, the carpet fans out from under you, um, and the feathers separate, and they start to turn into like feather daggers, almost like very sharp feather points, and they start shooting at you. Um, and as they do, you notice Empath Esquire, the revolutionary type girl. Um, she takes very kind of like noble few dance steps in your direction. Um, and she's pointing, she's looking at you with her monocle. She puts a hand to it um, and she projects what seems like like a technicolor aura out of the monocle. Um, and you're, you're feeling what she what you presume that she is feeling, which is a wave of nervousness. Like, you're not forced to feel this emotion, you're just overwhelmed with the feeling of Empath Esquire's nervousness, so you're not forced to feel this, just to be clear. (laughs) But it may Hmm. interfere with what you're doing. Hmm. I think so. So, how are you dealing with this double onslaught? Normally, I would try and dodge by voguing, but With the nervousness, I don't think it's going to work out, so I think I'm going to dodge in a more more cramping way, just less less graceful. Okay. Uh, So you can directly engage, and you're going to take a minus one because you're you're suffering from this wave of nervousness that's being projected at you. Ooh. Oh, God. That's a five. 
Um, yeah, we have team points. Let's use team points. <laughs> yeah, does anybody want to help Queen Bee with a team point or two? And if so, how? Uh, yeah, I think Vivi would want to help with that, seeing that, that Diana is sort of disengaged and honestly has been worrying that Empath Esquire is, is you know, biting her style as an anime nerd here. <laughs> Keeping an eye on her. I, I think Vivi would be just trying to press on that with the sword. Yeah, and that makes sense, because uh, Empath Esquire also seems to have a sword at, at her side as mm-hmm. well. Angie's also going to help. All right. So if uh, if Valerie is going for Empath Esquire, are you going for uh, Dame Divine in that case? Yes. All right. So, Vivi, you get come to interfere with Empath Esquire's um, empathing, uh, and you yes. knock her kind of out of the way. She only just barely manages to get her sword up. Uh, and actually, she looks a little surprised when you do, because uh, she pulls the sword up, uh, and she's a little unprepared that your sword actually slices through it, and you see that her sword is actually just a prop sword. Oh, no. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so she just barely dodges out of the way of that. <laughs> Embarrassing. All right, um, and Angie, what are you doing for uh, Dame Divine? I was just thinking I was going to kick her out of the way or something like that. <laughs> sure. Yeah, like, I think she she brings up another, like, thing of feathers to, like, cushion the blow, but you definitely knock her, like, off balance as she's shooting the, the dagger feathers at Queen Bee, which makes it easier for Queen Bee to dodge them. Wait, a couple maybe poke some holes in my jacket, but nothing connects. So you've got this this little, like, tangle of people happening on the one side of the stage, um, which is uh, just fine by the Maid Marvelous, who is just taking this opportunity to have, like, an empty area of the stage closer to the front to, like, show off more of what she can do. Um, And her dance style is more, like, uh, it's less, like, overtly impressive than, uh, than some of the other girls, but you can tell that she's still a very, like, fit type girl. Um, she's definitely, <laughs> she works out. Um, and she is doing kind of like martial arts inspired moves, like kicks and punches in the air um, as she struts her stuff on the front of the stage and is gaining more of the like audience's attention by being in that center spot. I want to, I want to try something. Oh, sure. Um, I think Jaden, um, Jaden's going to try and put, put her off rhythm. So I think, um, he kind of, um, as he plays the drums, he, I think the group, um, Rhythmics probably have practiced with um, his drumming style enough to kind of get it, so not to be part of themselves. But I think he kind of speeds up just a little bit enough for Made Marvelous to kind of hear the change in pace and then try to keep up and in the process kind of go off sync. Oh, if possible. I see. Mm. I like this approach. <laughs> I feel like that's a provoke someone. Yes, probably. It's my worst stat but i'm gonna do it anyway <laughs> but it wouldn't be masks if people weren't rolling their worst stats exactly <laughs> all right oh fingers crossed <laughs> oh, oh no. okay oh no that's a that three really i don't I know don't think... if that can be helped with team without wasting a bunch of team points yeah i, yeah. I don't think we can i don't think we can oh yeah you're really oh each. that's true yeah. yeah no you can't save that unfortunately oh okay well i'm gonna take that Okay, uh, you try to do this, uh, but it turns out that uh, Made Marvelous is just completely unfazed by this, um, and in fact is adapting pretty well to the change in beat, and is taking advantage of like she's almost doing like kind of like stutter stop dance moves, just to like highlight the off syncness and make it look kind of cool, and that just makes the audience love what she's doing even more. Oh, damn it! <laughs> um, and I'm gonna have you mark a condition uh, in response to that. Oh, I'm not guilty, but I think I'm going to mark Afraid. Alright. I think Afraid works. I think that's probably like a trick that he'd been working on and it didn't work. So it's like, oh no, what what else do I have up my sleeve? Yeah. Um, also, because like uh, a bunch of you are now all on the one side of the stage defending Queen Bee, you're kind of out of the range of Jaden's moat protection. And I think Diana realizes this as she is sizing up to take another shot uh, this time at Angie. Okay. I can defend, I guess. <laughs> that would Unless... probably be a directly engage because it's oh, yourself. Unless yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. else wants to defend you. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to directly engage a threat. That works out way better for me anyway. Alright. And you have a plus one from when I boosted you. I do. Yeah, you haven't used your plus one yet. Okay, so... Whoa. Oh. Okay, you didn't need that plus one. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. That was a 15, listeners. 
I, it would have been a plus uh, four because I already had plus three on my danger. Yeah. Plus Jane, so I rolled an <laughs> well, 11 before that. In, in fact, the roll 20 template that usually says, like, miss, hit, full hit, uh, that just says kapow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm going to resist or avoid the blow and yep. to create an opportunity for my allies. Okay. What kind of opportunity would you like to create? Well, we need to we need to take them out in order to own the stage, right? Yes. Yeah. You need to start knocking people off the stage at some That's point. That's exactly what I'm going to intend to do. I'm going to try and get some openings in there for so that we can start getting them off the stage so that we can perform like we were meant to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the opportunity is uh, you completely, like, s- and very, like, smoothly avoid this arrow shot. Like, you see it coming just because it's very bright in your vision and it's easy to, like, react in time because it's far enough away. So you, like, very spectacularly dance out of the way of this arrow um, and simultaneously start moving towards Diana. I would say almost barreling towards her <laughs> and trying to intimidate her closer to the edge of the stage. Uh, so you're, you've got her teetering close to the edge right now, but not quite off it. And she's got uh, Flora Fantastic Ashley rushing to her aid. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that on your next turn, but she's coming your way. Okay, I'm ready. And, oh, whose turn is it now? <laughs> I feel like Valerie hasn't gone in a bit. I think Valerie. Okay. So your last position was you were uh, swinging your sword at Empath Esquire and you broke her prop sword. Yeah, I think I'm just, I'm just gonna keep pressing that advantage that I seem to have caught her off guard and she's clearly got a very indirect power so I'm, I'm just gonna keep trying to to press her with my sword attacks and like knock her out of the running while I have the opportunity and of course she's going to try and use her powers to interfere with that um, so as she's trying mm-hmm. to dodge she is emanating another aura from her monocle in your direction um, and mm-hmm. it is a, a wave of frustration still tinged with nervousness and building towards an anger all right so that's going to be... Oh, sorry, I, I, I forgot to say that you'd be rolling with a minus one because of that. Oh, okay. Um, but that's still an well, eight in that case. Yeah. Of the directly engage options, can I take something from them? Can I can I take her uh, take her monocle Ooh, yeah. in, the, in the melee? Definitely. Uh, you definitely have a, a power that would be good for that, I feel like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think because during this, this exchange, Vivi is going to basically try to keep driving her back and keeping her off her feet and then raise up a hand and use her telekinesis to just yank the the monocle off while Empath Esquire is sort of falling back on her heels. Yeah, that's fair. And I think you're you're also similarly pushing her towards the edge of the stage in the similar sort of Mm -hmm. direction, maybe towards stage center. And you've almost got her there. I think because you're not resisting or avoiding her blows, Mm -hmm. Uh, you do manage to get the monocle, and that does take her by surprise. Um, but you realize, well, once you've got it, that like the prop sword, the monocle is really just there for visual effect, and she can still channel her powers at you regardless. <laughs> so she is actually going to... Uh, let me look at your sheet here. Uh, I'm going to have you mark angry, because you're starting to be affected by uh, Empath Esquire's anger. Like, <laughs> you're not forced yeah. to be angry, but you're, you're, you're in that mood. I think that checks out. Yeah. I think there's... It, whether it's genuine or if it's just sort of channeling that uh, empathic anger, yeah. If you're starting to feel like, like, come on, this 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 feels like she's not even like taking this seriously. Like you don't even you you've got all of all of these like props that aren't even part of your powers. <laughs> yeah, and and empath Esquire kind of like she even kind of like shouts in the middle of the song like, "Stop taking my things! I've got a very." <laughs> important aesthetic to keep together (laughs) all right so you've almost got her to the edge you've got two people who are almost to the edge although there's still four other people to contend with i think i'm gonna go to jaden here i think because um made marvelous is starting to feel a little like yeah i'm I'm dealing well with this from you um she's gonna move more directly towards you and she's gonna reach up to the the platform and she's gonna vault up onto it and she's gonna more directly like try and like scare you away from the drums Ooh, okay what do you do in response to this i want to unleash my powers as i see her um leap up i want to try and just um not slowing down with it be on my jumps i'm just gonna start blowing and then blowing harder and harder and just blow her off the, p- the pedestal if All i right. can <laughs> sure Ugh. 
my luck with rolls have been terrible the last couple of days. So yeah, I'm just gonna say that before I roll. That's fair. <laughs> oh god damn it. Oh. <laughs> So you got a six from that. Um, nobody's really on Jaden's side of the barrier, but if you give me a good justification, I will accept a team point. Hmm. Or does anybody want to use a team point? I'd like to, but I can't think of a way. Yeah, I think Vivi's too too focused on what she's doing. Yeah. I think that's that's where Angie's at too, is she's trying to get Diana off the stage right now. Yeah, you're all kind of just like swarmed with people right now, unfortunately. Sorry, Jaden, I don't yeah. think anybody's in a great position to help you. No, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, this is all I'm falling mark. on you, by the way, too. <laughs> I'm gonna mark, um, hopeless. Sure. Yeah, so, again, made Marvelous, uh, like, she's just got, like, this very, like, strong grip. Uh, she, like, definitely lifts, um, and she, she flexes as she gets up on the stage. The, the wind doesn't blow her off, and she is, like, she, she's not gonna, like, hit you, but she is gonna, like, the platform is enough that she's gonna, like, kind of dance shuffle like very threateningly around the drum set towards <laughs> you i mean it's working <laughs> he's definitely feeling threatened <laughs> yeah um uh, and actually i think she might take a uh, a swing out with her her legs and try to kick the chair out from underneath you Ooh, i mean I, it works i guess <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and so you you Ooh. fall maybe not off the platform but definitely the chair falls off uh the the platform behind you and you find yourself on the yeah. ground and we'll come back to that on your next turn. Um, so basically I created this opportunity to get somebody to try and knock Diana off of the stage, and I kind of missed if somebody took advantage of that opportunity, so I'm not sure if I oh, go... No. Okay, so maybe I could try. Yeah, maybe, Queen Bee, do you want to spot that Angie's got Diana in a good position and maybe r run to try and help her? I think that's a good idea. All right. <laughs> okay, so I see Diana off balance, and... Uh, I'm going to cartwheel towards her and then do a handstand kick. Nice. nice. And you'll definitely get a plus one on that from the opportunity. Oh, good. So that'll be a directly engage. Perfect. Directly engage. Plus one. Hell yes. 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 That's a ten. First of all, I'm going to take her dignity. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to surprise and frighten because I moved so fast from one side of the stage to the other. Oh, nice. Now they know what we can do. So I just do a couple flips, handstand, double kick, straight down. I send her possibly into the audience. I just send her crashing back. And then I just do the predator handshake uh, with Angie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So surprising everyone in Sagittaria, including Diana. Diana is the first to get knocked out. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what happens when you establish yourself as the biggest threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Diana, uh, when she realizes this, she's a little in shock. Like, she's not processing, like, that's what happened. And she is just gonna sit there for a bit as she, like, processes. Stings, doesn't it? We'll come back to oh, her no. in a bit. <laughs> So an ex existential crisis. She's just like splayed out on the floor, legs kind of like uh, open in front of her, like as she's landed on her butt or something. Her cape is a mess around her, and yeah, she's just we're, we're gonna leave her sitting there in shock for for a little bit. <laughs> nice, now me. Since you ha you also did have Flora coming your way, uh, Flora slash Ash Ashley, um, Flora is coming in for revenge at this point. Okay, um, yeah, I guess I have no choice but to directly engage her. I think so. Yeah. yeah, she's coming in. She's doing like kind of a like she's got that like kind of cutely plump figure, and she's doing like a pirouette kind of thing towards you and spinning out her like pixie dust glitter at the two of you, um, and you can feel yourself starting to become drowsy. You'll take a minus mm. one because you're drowsy. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's just gonna engage her, because I also have a move where she essentially is going in guns blazing without really thinking about what she's doing. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, she does hit. All right, so you got a nine on that mm -hmm. one. Uh, so I probably you would just, like, would you? Are you just gonna resist the effects of the pixie dust then? In this case, or? yeah, I think so. All right, and also since you're in the same vicinity, uh, Queen Bee, I'm also gonna have you roll that directly engage. Of course. Whoa. <laughs> you're rolling I hot guess. tonight. That's a thirteen. I, I, 
That's amazing. Nice. So you definitely get to resist that as well. And what else would you like to do? I'd like to take something from her, but uh, I don't know what. You could <laughs> you could take an opportunity. She's close enough to the edge of the stage that you could do the same thing that you just did to Diana. You take her balance. Oh my god. Okay, but in this case, uh, I would like to do like a combo move. Sure. Like, oh y- yeah, you want to do a combo move with Angie? Yes. All right. I want you to swing me. Please do Just this. Use me as a sledgehammer. Okay, sure. <laughs> so ju- I just lock arms with you and you just... Yeah, maybe we do that twirly thing, like I'm about to throw you like a shot put right into her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and then just spin yes. around. And then maybe at the same time, though, you're just making it look really like ballerina-like and cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then just throw you right into her. And just trust you that you'll land Fantastic. on your feet. You know me. Direct hit. Yes. So you pull off this impressive, like, spinning shot put combo move that sends Queen Bee flying both feet first towards uh, Flora slash Ashley uh, and sends her flying towards Diana off the stage as well. And I'm going to ask you to do an unleash your powers to stop yourself from, like, your momentum sending you flying off the stage with her. Oh, yeah. Please, 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 please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I hit her. I Then I flip in midair and I just stand on the edge of the stage. Arms wide. Yeah. And that's a big cheer from the audience. Like you're basking. The both of you are basking in the applause. Uh, and also Ch- Karen is cheering her heart out. She's waving her light sticks. Um, they're all yellow at the moment because they're both very kind of get like yellow associated. That's true. We're definitely the black and yellow duo. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that section for the win. Yeah, and I think a few other people in the audience pick up on this uh, and you see more light sticks in the audience starting to, to turn yellow. So as Queen Bee and Angie are basking in the front, Valerie is sort of struggling with empath in the front as well um Jaden um you're in a pretty bad position right now yep uh I'm gonna actually have you take a powerful blow so what happens Mm. here is made marvelous is she she, I'm gonna say that this is like you don't know this but I need to say this she didn't want to do this because she was asked not to. (laughs) She was asked not to use her powers if possible. Uh, But she's feeling like so like energized and in the moment and like she's in a good spot that she is going to transform on stage into a Shetland pony. (laughs) And she is going to kick out with her back legs and kick you off the platform towards the edge of the stage. Oh, oh God. (laughs) Hey there, everyone, and thank you for listening to the first part of our finale for Arc 1! Yay! Oh, we're all very excited to finally be releasing this. The recordings for this session were truly epic in both scope and length. (laughs) We had nearly four hours of raw audio for this session. And after cutting out a bunch of the slower game mechanics talk, we managed to trim it down to a tight two parts with all the best stuff at the forefront. So I really hope you enjoyed this part and are looking forward to part two soon. While I've got your attention though, I posted this on the show's Twitter account, but it absolutely needs to be said in the show proper as well. And that's that we are officially declaring Super Idols RPG to be an apartheid-free zone in accordance with the principles of the Palestinian-led BDS movement. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, and aims to end the apartheid of the Palestinian people by the State of Israel. In accordance with the movement's principles, Super Idols RPG will boycott all products, companies, and organizations that support the Israeli settler state. We will not use Israeli-made products in the production or promotion of this show, and we will not be inviting on any individuals known to support the state of Israel as guests or players. Links to the BDS toolkit, as well as other useful resources on Palestine, will be linked in our show notes. On a similar note, we would also like to acknowledge on show that 
being an apartheid-free zone means acknowledging and denouncing all settler colonial states, not just Israel. While our show is set in Canada, and I myself am based in Canada, it too is a settler state with a violent past and present when it comes to the treatment of indigenous peoples. Same goes for the United States. Both of these countries have a lot of work to do in regards to reconciliation and giving land back to indigenous nations. So yes, free Palestine, Canada is fake, support oppressed peoples all over the world. And above all, just do your best, do your best for people. We'll be doing the same as much as we can. With that all said, thank you all again for listening. Look forward to part two and the end of our first arc of the show. It's pretty dang cool, y'all. And we promise that's not just horsing around. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dana Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who has an in-character Twitter at Queen Bee. 15160871. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons Circus, Chris T, Noreen, and Sensei1477. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for a promo from our network partner, Control Group. Thank you all for listening. Stay well, and goodbye until next time. Bored of D&D? Want to try something else? Why not check out Control Group? We test systems so you don't have to. Using our patented mini campaigns along with one shots, we test how far you can stretch systems with our unique ideas and broad storytelling. Our mission statement is to give a voice to those not often heard in the TTRPG community. So whether it be a system you've never heard of, or our testers being people of color, people on the LBGTQIA plus spectrum, we want to make sure our stories are broad, vast, and told from different perspectives. So whether you want classic role-playing or just big goofs, come listen to us try out systems, some of which we've even made ourselves. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts, or head over to controlgrouppod.com. That's CTRL, just like the key on your keyboard. There you can find the systems we test along with easily accessible PDFs. So check us out if you're into Monster of the Week, Passion de los Passiones, A Song of Fire and Ice, Blazers and Feelings, Gunsight, Void Worlds, Wizards and Wands, Stranded, Interstitial, The Last Shonen, and so much more! 